<clears throat> oh, fudge. So you do you want to address your Grizzlies now, later? I mean, I just, I so, just feel like. I will say this. I feel like LeBron James' last documentary is going to be based off this year, and it's going to show him beating the Grizzlies, which is okay. I'll, I'll deal with that. This is going to show him beating the Warriors. This is going to show him beating the Suns and then winning a championship, and then there we go. Are oh, you got Lakers going all the way? Dude, they beat the Grizzlies. Who else? Who else? No one else can go against them. They're the best team in the league, and they beat them. Well, I, yes, I know, you're, I know you're a Grizzlies fan, but I, I don't. I don't. I don't necessarily think that them beating the Grizzlies means that they're going to win the whole thing. Now, I, I will say I do think they have a chance, right? Because they're they're playing great defense. This is a completely different roster since the All Star break, so it's. I know. But Dylan Brooks I mean, got to go. Dylan Brooks got to go. Dude, you, ah, he's got to go. I'm sorry. I'm you sorry. know, it's it's just, and I told you this months ago when they started running off at the mouth. I was just he like, did. you know what? I like this young Grizzlies team, but they're making it every day the season progresses. They make it harder and harder to like them. Mm -hmm. And they talked all this shit and Mm -hmm. got dog walked in an elimination game by 40. And I told you this was going to happen if they were getting going to get put out of the playoffs. That last game that they got eliminated, they were going to fold. This is what young, inexperienced teams do. Like they just, they just, like they didn't even go down swinging. They just, they got a, ran off the court, bro, by a bunch of a, quote unquote old dudes. I'm gonna tell you why it's so painful, right? You know my wife's a Lakers fan, bro. Like, ooh, how how was that night? You forgot about that? Like, yeah, you forgot about that. So that's how bad it is. <laughs> that the last game, and we're looking at each other, and I'm like, so we supposed to do our podcast and everything else together. I'm like, you know what? Nope. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. We're okay. We ain't got something no Grizzlies. Next subject. <laughs> Next subject, bro. It's so painful. It's so painful. Well, welcome back to the New Box Nerds podcast, everybody. I'm your host, Chris, a.k.a. Prince, with the homie, Deron, a.k.a. Medic Grizzly. Deron, good, bro. Grizzlies aside, how you feeling, man? I'm okay. Even Giannis got knocked out, bro. Yeah. Well, yeah. And Giannis got hurt. So I I, I honestly, I, I feel really bad for Giannis because I, I, I genuinely like, like Giannis. Yeah. Um. But you know the Bucks will be back. They'll be back. I, I think they'll get a little bit younger this offseason because they do have like the oldest roster in the NBA right now. They need to get some some young bodies in there. But um, man, you let's, know. let's go on about some trailers. Some Marvel yeah. comic stuff, man. We want some little basketball right now. Anyways, gonna... guys, we we are back not to talk basketball, but to talk comic books, everything in nerddom um, going on lately. We've gotten a couple more trailers. I know we've been dropping some more um, episodes about trailers lately, but there's just too many to cover. Mm-hmm. In an hour or half hour time, so um, you know this week we're we're here to talk about uh, Spider Man Across the Spider Verse, which is coming out June second, and the new Flash trailer, which is coming out June sixteenth. So, mm-hmm. Duran, um, I, I want to talk Across the Spider Verse first because uh, I feel like this sequel is very highly anticipated because the first one kind of came out of nowhere. In hindsight, yeah. it's easy to look back and be like, oh, of course, you know this movie is great, but at the time it was, you know. Sony and Marvel were doing their partnership thing, and people were all like, "Oh, uh, uh, you know, a Sony led a Sony led Spider Man animated film. How good is this thing going to be?" And then it mm-hmm. ended up being like one of the greatest comic book movies ever, right? So, um, here we are with the sequel. I know there's probably a lot of people who've seen the trailer who are probably going to watch the movie, but that don't know much of anything about some of the different iterations of Spider Man. Yeah. Um, and the villain, who I'm assuming is going to be a sub villain in Spot. Um, you think so? I I have I have a theory, but I want to I want to I want to let you get your thoughts off first. Okay, so the cool thing about this, like Into the Spider Verse, and the collaboration with that Sony is that there's so many characters in Spider Man. Like I personally love Venom more than anybody else, but you all can say they all were birthed or they originally came from Spider Man, right? So for Spider-Man 2099, which is like the main quote unquote villain in this type of um, movie, you get to see everybody. You get to see Noir back. You get to see Punk Rock back. You get to see freaking Peter comes back with his daughter. Like you see so many different varieties in this actual Spider film that I love. You would never probably see on the main type of live action. And now we go to the character in the spot. 
Spot is a character that looks goofy, comic relief, but if you actually look at his powers and knew a little more history of him, he has some very dangerous stuff for the actual multiverse in the universe. Um, they showed him an ATM and they showed a loaf of bread coming out of his stomach. It's funny, it really is. But this character was um just literally has a white costume and has ability to reach into the actual rip like almost wormholes into the other universe. That's a big problem in our MCU. How do you feel about when you see that? So when I saw it, number one, I thought, all right, how do you fight this guy? Because you yeah. can't ever really land a good hit on someone like this, right? Mm -hmm. Number two, at least what we know in the comics about how people with these kinds of powers, whether it's being able to open portals or being able to teleport like a Nightcrawler from the X-Men, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you were kind of talking about this a little bit off air. Um, it's not so much as just a reaching here in this portal coming out here over here in a, in a different space. Um, it's whether the characters know it consciously or subconsciously, they're doing interdimensional travel. Mm -hmm. using those powers, right? It's the same thing with Nightcrawler. With Nightcrawler, and it's... I forget which which comics it's in, but um, it's briefly explained where when Nightcrawler is, is teleporting, the same way like when Spot's opening a portal, he's mm -hmm. not just going from place to place. When he teleports, when he disappears, he actually yeah. travels through a different dimension and comes back to our dimension in a different spot. That's how he's mm -hmm. able to make that quick of a change, right? And the same thing with Spot. So considering what these Spider-Verse films are about, multiverse and interdimensional travel, I think there's going to be, there's clearly got to be a connection between Spot and the rest of these Spider-Men that are out there, 2099 included, um, where they must have some kind of knowledge of this Spot guy. Because I, I, I'm going to assume that he's been in other universes as well, because that's just the nature of his power, right? You don't, you don't access wormholes and portals without mm -hmm. accidentally stumbling into like other dimensions and other multiverses. And the cool thing about the trailer, everything else about that, like for instance, like let's go back a little history with Spot. Spot was, in the comic, was supposed to be another version of Cloak. If you guys know who Cloak is, having the ability to actually transfer and hide people and do different things. That's what Super Spot underrated was, character. Yeah, that's who Spot was supposed to be referenced to or supposed to be like. Um, scientists got crazy, found the ability to do this, and then he became who he was. He worked for Kingpin. So Kingpin from the first movie, now he has like a little henchman. It all makes sense with the flow. And also you mentioned a good point about how other universes had to know about the Spot. If you look at Miguel, Miguel Spider-Man 2099, you see the anger. He doesn't really care for young Spider-Man. He cares about for adults that have mature and know what they want to do. You show it like some background with him. He lost his daughter. So you see the parts of the actual film of seeing little daughter skits in there. And then you see him here, like he made the comment that you save one person or save the world. It kind of referenced like he decided to save the world over saving his daughter. So anybody choosing to not align with that, it angers him. So seeing um, Miles saying, well, I can do both. And then seeing the clip of his father at the very end, like, is he going to try to pick and save his dad? Or is he going to pick this big spider universe? Um, that is really, really cool. You see him trying to balance his life. You see him having, he got to be in Spanish and your mom is Spanish, bro. That was funny. That was pretty funny on that too. It's just cool. Yeah, not, no, yeah, I thought that was funny. I, um, I, I agree with you about, about, um, Miguel, the 2099 Spider-Man. I think mm -hmm. what I was saying earlier, I think Spot is going to be the kind of initial villain to kind of get the story moving. Okay. Um, but I think 2099 Spider-Man is going to end up being the villain at the end because it's clear that they have a difference in philosophy, him and Miles, mm -hmm. um, where I think <clears throat> it's going to be one of those situations where Miguel is going to be like, look, you don't understand what's at stake. If you go back and try to save this one person, you're going to set off a, train, a chain reaction that's going to destroy the world type of, yes. type of situation. And of course... You know, Miles being a kid and not not understanding kind of the gravity of of the situation, he's going to be like, "No, I can save, I can save everyone." Kind of in a similar way that like Tom Holland did in No Way Home, right? Where it's just like, "Hey, if we send these guys back to their time, they're all going to die at the hands of Spider Man." Mm -hmm. And Doctor Strange is like, "Oh, fuck them!" Like, yeah, it is what it is, right? Um, that's just not who Spider Man is, which in the comics has gotten him into a bit of bit of trouble right mm -hmm. because um and this is another one of those things where like why spider-man is so beloved in the fandom is because 
he he's one of those rare characters where you know his life ain't all butterflies and rainbows like no. really really terrible terrible things happen to spider-man in the comics um aside from the fact that he's fucking broke most mm-hmm. of the time right so i think i think that's where miles and miguel are gonna like really butt heads is you know miguel is seemingly the leader of all of, of this kind of spider verse council of spider people if you will yeah. um and you've got this one rogue spider-man not not falling in line right so mm-hmm. i i see that conflict towards the end of the movie i, I wonder how it's gonna how it's gonna end up um but to your point if he's if Miles is trying to like save his dad, we we know about Prowler, his uncle, yeah. um, how he kind of that's kind of his version of Uncle Ben. Um, but I I wonder if if his dad's not going to make it out of this. I don't know. They definitely a uh, great job in the trailer. Definitely great job in the trailer. Um, it's a Spider Man is known for trauma. Every single Spider Man, almost what made them Spider Man is the stuff they had to go through. Yep. Um, and you can see Miguel. It's like he's the most adult one now. Yeah, Peter being the jokester and with his kid, but Miguel, like he's still stressed out, still putting paws on people, still doing what he has to do. And he even gets so angry. He referenced about how you like Tom Holland, Spider Man, No Way Home, means reference him and Doctor Octopus and how it caused all these problems with the rip and everything else. So it shows the universes are connected. Um, they always tease about that, but you actually know, like, hey, what is happening in MCU? This is a part of it, and that's interesting but it's also like dang is pops gonna really like die <laughs> and in this film to make spider-man miles who he's supposed to be yeah it's i don't do you, you think they're gonna i don't know bro do, do you think they're gonna try that trick again where they bring in tom holland and andrew garfield and Tobey mcguire like to do like a voiceover well they mentioned the first one he's supposed to do it but they felt that it was too distracting and that like how and i agree with them. i think tom holland in the first movie would have been no point Agreed. Um, um, so now I think Miles, I hope this leads to a live action Miles. Almost like it'd be the first time ever I can think of where you have two animations and there's a live action. I think the popularity of Miles being the centerpiece is that. So I don't think you need Andrew Garfield would be pretty cool because um, that could potentially be a third move for him and like maybe Venom. So it could be like the way of saying that all the worlds are all ripped apart and now you have your Spider Man, that made Spider Man 3, it would be always won it. And then you also have your Miles Morales three, but it shows live action. So it can be like almost like a ripple effect. Um, I like that. And also, I think the spot character is going to be um, play a real big part. More than people think it's going to be. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think it's definitely a possibility. And like we know in the first Spider Man movie or Spider Man Homecoming, I should say, Miles is, he's referenced. Yeah. Um, by Donald Glover's character saying, you know, I, I, have, a, I have a nephew. Mm-hmm. That lives that lives in this neighborhood. I don't want those. I don't want those kind of weapons around here. So, Miles exists. Yes. And so, I, mm. I mean, I, I think the I think the chances of them actually giving us a live action Miles Morales anytime soon are probably slim. Really? Which is, uh, and I only say that because they're giving us this animation, mm-hmm. these animation movies, right? Like, I feel like if they were going to do live action, they would have just done live action. But maybe they did animation because they thought a live action film wouldn't perform well, but then this animation movie like broke all kinds of records. So I don't know. Even like, I'm going to tell you how important miles is to the community. Just put it out of this, like father being African American and mom being Latino. It just also like they're making video games like PS five one of the best Spider-Man games are, Miles a part of it. Yeah. Where's Spider Man? Shows Miles. Like he, he has an audience, and people want to see it. Um, do I think they maybe were doing a tester with the first animation to see if people would actually come out and see it, and also to venture in that world? Maybe, but it hit a home run with it. So why would they not come out with a second animation of it? Now I think with this being said, they can do like I said anything they want to do with it. I would love to one day see a live action Miles, and this is like a great segue to that. But I also understand that they kept it in the animation world because you're doing such a great job with that. Then what's next? You've already showed every freaking Spider Man there is. So I think next will be a live action. Right. No, I, I, that's a good point. Because, I mean, there's not, 
many i mean there's other stories you can do right but i mean yeah. if you're doing across the spider-verse when you're we're gonna see every iteration of spider-man that's out there mm-hmm. where do you where do you go from that right so like as you pass the torch to miguel because miguel has a cool story it's a dr doom story which is freaking phenomenal when doom takes over the world and that's under spider-man 2099 so that'll be a cool like animation one if they want to do that yeah i, I think I think it's probably more likely that they'll turn the animated Miles Morales mm-hmm. universe into like an expand like an expansive universe that's all animated. I think that's more likely to happen than a live action Miles Morales. Well, which I mean, I would love to see. I'm just, you know, I'm yeah. just 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 being realistic. Just being realistic. I think, and we're you know maybe this is a good segue from Marvel to DC, but mm-hmm. I would love, 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 love. Give me either one of these live action Miles Morales or live action Static. And honestly, some fan casting. The guy who voices Miles Morales, Shamik Moore, give me him a Static. Do you think the time has passed for him to be Static? For, Voice that, wise, for yes. that specific actor? Yes. No, I don't think so. Wu Tang Clan goes to my Scarface. Because that's a Scarface. Because, 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 because I, I don't think the time has passed because he still looks young. Tobey okay. Maguire was thirty-two when he played Spider-Man. He maybe because I saw him in Wu Tang, like maybe because that's just him being a great actor, and that's shown that he showed the great and everything else about that. Right. Um, being the chef, I just feel like now going back to that, it's like. It's a big change. Maybe the dude from Stranger Things, I can't think of his name right now. The actor oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. He will be a better role. Lucas. I don't know. What, yeah. I forget his real name, but he's Lucas mm-hmm. in, in Stranger Things. Yeah, I so, like- I mean, he could be a great static as well. Or he could be a, yeah. he could be a great live action Miles Miles as well. And I think um, Danny Glover, of course, could be the Prowler. Like, there's things you could do. Like, of course, he says it's my nephew. Which Donald Glover. Not Danny, Donald Glover. Danny Glover. I'm tripping. <laughs> <laughs> I am tripping, but uh, that would be a freaking sh- a show. But uh, I think that the time may have passed, but I, it would work for voice acting. I really do, but I just don't see this live actor. Yeah, I just I, honestly, if they let's be real, if they announced, hey, we're developing a live action static movie, take my money right now. I'm already in. You don't even need to show me a trailer. I'm already I'm already in. Already in. Anyways, um, you guys, let us know what you thought about the the mm-hmm. across the Spider Verse trailer. If you guys liked it. We're looking forward to it. The first one was great, so we have, I mean, no objections to think that the second one's not going to be equally as good or better. Um, So I want to switch over to DC. We got a second Flash trailer recently. Mm -hmm. um, Gave us a little bit more footage, a little bit more of a closer look into what the plot's going to be. What were your initial thoughts? I mean, I know, I mean, guys like you and I, like, we were already in after the first Flash trailer. Um, Yes. But you know, given the 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 second trailer with a little bit more footage, what were your what were your thoughts about about uh, the second trailer? That is really happening, bro. Like June sixteenth, like this is really happening. We That's talk close. about this even from the Super Bowl trailer, it's even before where all the stuff happened, and we heard about it. But like, it's really happening. You got two trailers, like yeah, there's no doubt. So, um, seeing both flashes in the opening scene, like I was basically like, yo, are they they know about each other, are they enemies, like. They're really there. And then seeing how they're going to, I think they're going to alter the timeline a little bit as far as uh, the book versus the movie. Um, they made it seem Michael Keaton's still throwing hands, bro. Like, they just mm-hmm. throwing him. Like, he still just got out the gym. Still got it, baby. Everybody. And, like, I, that is amazing because, like, seeing the evolution of the acting from then to now and seeing his character still be relevant. It's still Batman, but everybody has their own little mix on it. Knowing that you almost forget that Ben Affleck's in the movie. Like, you forget about that because Michael Keaton was everyone else's Batman prior to us. Like, our older generation, they love Michael Keaton. So that's really, really, like, it brings the intensity and also, like, the love and joy of the all the films matter. I am looking forward to this film by far the most this year than over any other film that I can think of right now. Yeah, no, I'm. I agree with you 100. This is my most anticipated film of the year because, yes. again, just because of the implications. Like, we understand DC is going through a, a, a regime change, and we have pieces of the this old regime 
in mm -hmm. a lot of the characters in the Flash, Ben Affleck, Ezra Miller, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but Flash in the Flashpoint story resets the DC universe, mm -hmm. right? So, or at least in the comics it does, right? So I think the timing for this movie coming out is absolutely perfect yes. because James Gunn and company, mm -hmm. they have an opportunity to take the old universe mm -hmm. and give it a proper closing and make a and make a seamless transition into their next universe. So I'm I'm really interested to see how they're gonna how they're gonna handle this. Mm -hmm. Um I do think we're gonna get like dark flash in this. Um like because like in the trailer you notice number one like the Barry that we know, or at least the one that's from the, the Sunniverse, he's wearing a lot of blue. Mm -hmm. And you can see it in like some of the flashbacks he has. There's like a blue color palette. And then the other Barry, whose universe that he's in now, is often in yellow. Yes. Yes. Very often in yellow. Um, now, we do see him rocking like an all black. I'm assuming is a repurposed old Batman suit that he's using. It looks a flash freaking suit. fire, dude. It looks, it looks, it so looks cool. great. But the part that that got me was I think it was our Barry talking to the other Barry, mm -hmm. and the other Barry saying to him basically, "No, no one dies," and like being really angry about it. So I feel like it's going to be kind of a similar situation like we were talking about with Miles and Miguel mm -hmm. about our Barry saying, hey, look, I need to go back and put things back the way that it was. Yeah. Knowing that that's going to result in Barry's mom's death. And other Barry ain't going to have that. He could be like, look, your fucking mom died. Mine's not dying. And there's, there's, I mean, there's, there's clearly going to be tension there, I think. I don't. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to come about. That's a theory. I don't, I don't know anything wow. about the movie, but I'm assuming there's going to be. Because think about it, we know we have Zod there, right, as a villain, right? We know that. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I think when, when we're doing like a time traveling, you know, universe altering event, beating Zod is not going to like solve the issue. Yeah. There, there's 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 going to be something else to this story that we haven't seen yet, right? And Warner Brothers, or I guess I should say Discovery now, they are very confident in this movie because they've already lifted like the review embargo, and we're a month away, month and a half away from this movie hitting theaters. It's the piggyback on the general Zod thing. Shout out to Man of Steel. Man of Steel, my personal opinion. I'm not a big Spider. I'm a Superman fan, but that was a really good film. It was a good Agreed. film that deserved to have a second. And Very underrated comic book movie. Probably yes. one of the most underrated comic book movies of all time. Yeah, so having like General Zai back in this movie and being relevant, again, thank you. Kudos to UDC for doing that. But you're right. I think he's a JV villain in this. I don't think he's going to be the main villain because you're not going to have a story wrapped up being General Zai. We've seen that before. That's yep. not the conclusion. Um, ooh. The blue light, the colors mean so much. It means so much in film and seeing that even when like the flashback when um, Barry's mom is dying and you see him holding the arms of the father, you see him look at Barry and then you see him also get kissing the father and he's going to die. Like this small little thing like that. Like, and then you see the overlap of the voices of the timeline and seeing Iris West talking. Like you don't know really what's happening or whose thoughts are in. But of course, when we see the film, we're going to see all of it basically unravel and spiral out of control. But yeah, it's going to, someone's going to flip. It's going to flip. It's going to come to a point where it's only one Flash is really going to be the one that we actually care for. And the other one's going to be like, yo, you're not doing this. Let's throw hands. I'm going to stop you at all costs. So, right. yeah, it's definitely going to happen. Bro, this really happened. Like, this is – both movies are in June? Two yeah. weeks away? Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. Crazy. Yeah. it's really happening. It's time. And, like, it's it's crazy, bro, because, like, I remember this movie was, was announced years ago, bro. Yes. Yes. Years ago, and like it, it went through countless directors, writers. Mm -hmm. Ezra Miller's out here on his bullshit, and the studio is like still stood behind all the fuckery. And say what you want to say mm -hmm. about all the controversy around the production of this film. You don't. You don't 
take all that controversy on the chin yeah without a damn good reason this movie so, this movie must be really good and like everything people have been saying about it is that it's really 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 fucking good so i i'm excited dude so it says writing credits as christina hudson and um joby harlow um or harold so the writing must be so superior and like supreme on every single aspect for all the directors to see this all the casting they had and they still like you said they stood by it so it must have been a phenomenal out of the park writing like they must have did their thing because there's no way most people want to change this change that we never heard about that we just said we're going to change director and we're changing cast members never the story and then james dunn coming from where he's coming from over here now and then saying you know what i like it this is gonna be great you don't do that yeah, it's not my it's not my baby. I'm still gonna rock with it like it is my baby. Like that's a right. strong yeah. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. So I, I I have high hopes for this film. Yeah, I just I, I can't imagine. I just can't imagine everything that's going on and everything that people have said about this film, given what they've had to put up with. I can't imagine that this movie is trash. It was. It can't be. <laughs> do you think? Well, this, this is not really a high bar when I say this, okay? <laughs> it's, it's terrible when I say this. This is going to be the best film, <laughs> DC film in the past, <laughs> like, five years, six years? Like, is it the best film since the Dark Knight franchise? Do you think it's going to be on the, the level of the Batman? <sighs> that's that's tough. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know if it'll be on the level of like the Batman. I think if if I'm comparing it to like other like DCEU films, yes, I think my favorite ones of the DCEU were the first Wonder Woman, okay, Man of Steel. I don't even. I don't even. I, I'll just stop there. I don't even want to pick a third one. There are no bronze medals being given out here. Um, it's been that bad of a. Yeah. Um, so I, I mean, like I hope Lantern, so. Right? You like no. Green Lantern? Don't do that. Okay. Don't do that. I, I mean, I, I I hope this movie's good. I hope it's up to that caliber. You know what I mean? I mean, we've been waiting for this movie for for years, and I think again, it's just what it means for the future of the DC universe for James Gunn's version of the DC universe. Yeah, I'm so excited to see how this is gonna play out and like how they're gonna how they're going to make this transition. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um, I'm excited to see Ben Affleck as Batman again. Um, they they gave us, they're giving us like for the first time a blue and gray suit which I'm live really action, good. which yes. I'm, I'm interested in. I'm, I don't know mm-hmm. what the design is like on his chest. That's weird, but I'm sure there's a damn good reason for more. it. Yeah, a little more about that. So we have two Batmans. We have Affleck, we have Keaton. Mm-hmm. Do you think both want to walk out of here? A good question. I no really contract wise. That. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think both gonna walk out of here? You got two flashes and you got two Batman's. You know, I, I don't think Ben Affleck's gonna be in the movie a whole lot. I think okay. it'll be like in the trailer where we had Ben Affleck talking to Barry, basically, basically telling him like, you know, hey, this is a shit idea. You're probably mm-hmm. gonna end up <laughs> messing something up. Yeah. Um, and then we see Barry in the other universe. I think that's about as much as we're gonna get. From Ben Affleck's Batman, I mean, and that one action scene, I, I imagine. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I think that he's going to be safe. They're just going to let him kind of ride off into the sunset. Michael Keaton, though, I it it depends on how badly shit hits the fan in his universe when Barry gets there. Okay, because I I, I could totally I could totally see them killing him off as Barry like. You know, goes back to his own universe. I think he dies like halfway through the movie. Wow. Like okay. not earlier in the movie. Um let's say about fifty percent, close to sixty, which prompts why Flash has that kind of suit. I feel like something happened in the events and that's why he's like almost like a the honorary momentum I'm gonna wear this suit and my flash powers. Because he first didn't have the flash powers. So I see that as like them figuring out and then something happens. And then that's why he's in that suit. Wow. So you think, see, because I always just thought that it was just like he was just going to take like a, an older version. We saw a bunch of Batman suits we did. in there, right? I just figured that 
Batman would just be like, hey, you know, you got some powers now. Because we saw the little montage of them trying to mm-hmm. give New Barry his yes. powers with the, with the trying to recreate the lightning strike. Um, so I, I always just thought it was just, you know, I was just Bruce saying to New Barry, hey, you need a suit. Here you go. Just use one of these old ones. I think the Flash character is um, it's kind of ironic how we're doing Spider-Man character and Flash character have some layers they have with the trauma and how things spark things in their particular um origin i think that's going to be that or second part of it will be he goes and be batman beyond oh ben um again batman beyond a film and do what they want later on but because michael keaton is the only batman that you really can see him going to that role for batman beyond and no one will question it i'm not gonna lie if they told me that they were going to develop a batman beyond the live action film and michael keaton was going to play old bruce wayne i'm it like makes- I'm in. Right. It makes sense. So if you have a timeline up right now, you could just put him in there, implement him anywhere you want to, mm-hmm. and it will work. So if And it, make it like an Elseworlds kind of mm-hmm. kind of situation, right? Because like yes. you know that this other universe is out there and you've acknowledged that there are other universes, not just within the DCU, but mm-hmm. also with like the Batman, right? So you can do it. There's 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 no reason why why he can't. And I think it'll just come down to one, whether or not Michael Keaton wants to do it. Yes. Um, and number two, if this movie's good, because if the movie's not good, no one that's cast in it will we will ever see again. We're definitely not going to see Ezra Miller again, regardless. I don't think he's done I... too. There's been too much fuckery. Yo, what if in the Flash movie when he comes back, it's a different Flash? That'd be but hilarious. Anyway, he just me, me, me. But just uh, <laughs> just like we're closing. But I feel like. Michael Keaton, like you said, the success of this movie. I also feel this movie like it's must be well written for them to even be at this point because they could have scrapped everything based off Mr. Miller or what he did. So for them to even get to this point, it's going to be successful. It is. And yeah. then I feel like them showing more trailers of Michael Keaton, it almost like makes you forget about um, Miller's theatrics and you focus on like historical like yo this is key and this is act like like i'm gonna see everything so right. uh, they're really good on the timing of the trailer like you don't really see him speaking that much in the actual trailer right. we noticed they, they're, yeah, they're that's, just that's, that's true that's true and it's and it's it's difficult right because yeah. ezra is the star you can't hide the star in the movie you're trying to promote so i think they did a good job in 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 promoting the film um leaning a little bit more on you know michael keaton nostalgia and Yes. Um, just some of the some of the action set pieces. Um, I think, I think the actress that's playing Supergirl, she, this could be this could be a huge come Sasha. up for her Sasha. if she if she if people receive her well if the movie does well. Hey man, I mean they did say they were going to make a Supergirl movie. So when they seen Michael Keaton throw the fist, throw the hook shot. And you see her come with the like hands flying through like, the slow motion, destroying the gun. Yeah, yeah, like, yo, this is great. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked for this, man. I really am. Yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm super excited for this, man. It's um, again, my most anticipated of the year. It has a lot riding on it. The future of the DCU. I'm fun. not gonna say. I'm not gonna say the future of the DCU is resting on this because it's, it's kind of an old regime slash new regime film. I don't think James Gunn and the new regime had a whole lot of creative input on this. They may have had a couple of things here and there as they were like finishing it up, but mm-hmm. um, it's yeah. a win-win for James Gunn though, because mm-hmm. James Gunn literally if it's bad. Hey, um, hey guys, this had nothing to do with me. We're restarting now. It's great. Hey, see, I know how to pick and keep what's important. It works either way. Yep, that's true. So- no, you're that, that's a that's a good point because you can you could just say hey. This this movie was great, and this is perfectly segueing into our new DC universe yes. because now the universe has been reset. Now, last question before we get out of here. Which I don't want to do Rotten Tomato because Rotten Tomato scores I think are sometimes way off. Mm-hmm. Audience score is where I find my like true if I want to watch a show or not because the mm-hmm. audience mm-hmm. tells you if it's crap or not. Which film will have a better, higher audience score by the end of the month? You're saying Spider Verse or Flash? Mm-hmm. Yes, I think it's going to be Spider Verse. I think that's going to have a, a better audience score because of Mr. Miller's theatrics, or if the film actually being better. 
I'm going to say partly because of Ezra Miller's shenanigans. Okay. Two, because of um, recognition. And, and this is what I mean by recognition. People already know this Spider-Verse franchise is a good one. So it's going to be given the benefit of the doubt. If it's an if it's a mediocre movie, people will still say that they loved it and they had a great time. Yeah. If the Flash is a mediocre movie, people will say that it sucked. Because DC doesn't have a great track record. That's very true. Right? I mean, it's just it it just and, and it's I'm not saying that it's fair, but it just it is what it is, right? Like you're coming off the heels of into the Spider-Verse that was critically well received and fans loved it alike. The second one, even if it's not as good, it's still going to be a good time for most people. True. The Flash, with everything surrounding Ezra Miller, with the whole merger going on, and just DC's track record in the last decade, mm-hmm. it has to be it has to be above average for people to say that they had a good time. Because the bias is already kind of baked in there. And then you're going to have people that are going to shit on the movie just because of Ezra Miller anyway. I agree with everything you're saying, and I'm still going to go against you. Okay. Because I think Michael Keaton and the feel, like, I'm at work, bro. I'm at work. Be like, yo, you see Michael Keaton? Like, people just know, like, that's all they're talking about. These are old heads. So I feel like if there was a movie to bring people back to watch it, they good timing. Good timing. I, I, yeah, I no. Be, I, go ahead. I think that it's going to give him a positive score because I feel like some people, when comic book movies, I don't want to say superhero movies, when comic book movies were relevant and the spark in the past 10, 15 years, almost 20 years now, how it's been like a, a fire. At that time, it wasn't like that. So people may not have recognized how good he was at that particular role. And now you have a blended of audience that are open-minded to see things a little differently and may respect him and his craft a little bit more. Um, I just feel also General Zod or Spot. I'm not saying this, I'm just saying General Zod, Fair. Spot, Fair. Fair. girl. I'm just saying, like, I feel like I just feel like that's it. And plus, people hate on animation anyway. So that's fair. That. that's fair. That's fair. And that's not to say that I think Spider Verse is going to be an objectively better movie than The Flash. Yeah. Because just a little, no, just would, a little bit. I think. Because it, it. Both of those things could differ from yeah. one another, right? Like one could be a better movie, but be less well received than something else. Like, case in point, we were talking about Man of Steel earlier. I think that's a great movie. It's a great film. I think it's a great film. film. Wasn't well received for whatever reason. I don't know. Maybe maybe I just don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Maybe. That That's could still, be true. But That's, that still I, bothers me, dude. We didn't get us, but like, how do you drop that? But that's another day. We're going to keep it positive. Everyone keep yeah. it positive. Again, man, we're, we're, looking, we're looking towards the future for DCU. <sighs> We should talk about The Witcher season three when it comes out. I know it's like a we should, movie. but Henry Cavill's not going to be Geralt anymore. I know that's why we're talking about it because I just want to see your passion come out. <laughs> Fans, if you don't know about Prince, The Witcher is like a top five video game for him of all time. Like that's one of his favorite things to do. Um, if you guys, I know we're getting off topic here, but if you guys have not played The Witcher three, it's it's one of the greatest video games ever made, bar none. It's it it just is. Ask anyone who's played it that will tell you the same thing. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, this is great. I can't wait. Fans, please let us know how you feel. Comments. If you saw something on the chart we didn't see, uh, breakdowns, everything. We're, we will love to interact with you guys. We love doing this. If you got any other trailers that we don't know about, any films coming up you want to talk about, we'll do it all. TV shows, too. Yeah, definitely let us know. We'll definitely be back um, when the movies come out to do our spoiler reviews um, and talk about um, all the things in, that happened in the movie, some of the things that you know were maybe referenced from the comics. Um, you guys know we're we're big comic book heads, so we'll we'll dive deep in these. Um, but Deron, you got anything else, man? Nah, man. Peace and love. Great time. All right, guys. We'll we'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for hanging out with us, and uh, we'll see y'all next time. Peace.